Hi, this is Steve um, showing the next uh, chapter of uh, the pin to DMD editor. Today I will start cutting out scenes from a given recording and then trying to show you to how to colorize that with the different types of colorization. Um, I've already prepared uh, a little project that contains uh, only uh, the recording for now, uh, but also one of the new features um, called bookmarks, where you can um, jump to a specific location within each of the recordings. It's a Simpson Pinball Party, as you can see here, and it's a rather long recording with a couple thousands of frames, more than 30,000. So it's easier to navigate if you have this um, uh, navigation help. Let's say you can jump to a specific frame, which is in this case um, when extra ball is lit. So to start colorization, we first cut out uh, the scene. So um, we mark the starting point. Uh, let the thing play for a while, as long as it will play. Stop it was already. Um, too far, so we go back to the last point, was this one, and then do mark end and cut. So we have a new scene that is exactly about um, the extra ball thing, therefore, we also call it extra ball, and then maybe we do another one that was write something behind so when Humor runs down the stairs so again mark start let the scene play now I don't want to have all the blinking extra ball stuff so just the first part running humor running down the stairs so no. so this one exactly mark and and cut. So now we are also naming this uh, yes. As you can see, these types of scenes now have four planes. You can see it here. Um, in comparison to the normal recording that has only two planes. So four colors for a normal uh, pin model. This means um, we have increased the color depth from 4 to now 16 possible colors. Uh, and also when cutting it creates a new uh, palette that preserves uh, the first um, 4 colors which are always in for a VPC system and data east. Um, based on the normal palette, uh, color 1 um, 0, 1, uh, 5, and 15, or 7, and, uh, 5, and uh, 15. And these are now the first colors. So one possibility uh, to introduce color uh, is by simply uh, replacing uh, what is on the screen. So we can easily, um, this is a replacing mode. You can easily then draw over the existing scene. Uh, but this has to be done frame by frame. So when we now look at the scene, there is nothing more than uh, the extra ball um, font over here that is blinking. And you can start drawing uh, with the different drawing tools um, and introduce new color into um, the frame. This has to be done frame by frame. So
so which is in this case not it's not much effort uh, with the flood fill tool but um, we can not only uh, fill um, uh, the background we can also introduce new shapes so for instance adding uh, new things that weren't there before and when you play back the scene you always see this additional content uh, within in the scene so the flood filling tool uh, is somehow also of course um, drawing onto the former edges because it's filling uh, what is already there uh, but you can in the replace mode also add things that are weren't there before um, to use this scene actually we need to define um, a trigger frame which is of course then because this scene should replace the original one uh, the starting point for the extra ball so when we go back to the recording navigate to the extra ball start which is exactly the first frame of the replacement scene you could say now um, add uh, a color uh, switch uh, scene with the extra ball uh, scene we colorized and then uh, it would create a keyframe that triggers the replacement scene for extra walls. The playback will um, then be started at uh, that trigger frame and will exactly last uh, as long as the extra ball scene uh, has frames with exactly uh, the same delays that were measured on the recording time. So this is the one possibility to introduce new content and new color. And it's about um, replacing whole scenes. So you can introduce new content not only based on what was already there. And you can also introduce completely, um, completely new colors, of course. So now for the second technique, color masking. What is color masking good for? So there are situations where replacing the whole frame with all new uh, does actually not work because the frame uh, also contains dynamic content like scores or bonus or something. So when you look at this scene, this is an example for that. There's uh, something you can uh, colorize on the left and on the right, but in the middle there's dynamic content. What exactly is displayed here will vary from time to time. So in order to be able to add some color uh, without uh, interfering with the dynamic content, we use color masking. So first cut out the scene by pressing mark start, play the scene, Mark end and cut. And now we have the scene I call the scene mouse now. And then when we're now going to colorize this, I'm choosing uh, the color masking mode. So in color masking mode, uh, the whole scene gets not replaced, but we only add an additional um, plane. Um, for additional color. So for instance I choose um, to give the mouse some new colors and also maybe um, the figure on the, on the right. Yeah. Again we have to do this frame by frame so we can choose to do it like this or we can also use the clipboard functionality, the new clipboard functionality. So if I change this um, for one frame, I could copy the whole thing to the clipboard using Control C or Command C in the 
case of a Mac. Sorry, there was some error testing. Um, and then simply going to the next frame and inserting the clipboard content again. So we instantly have um, the color on the next scene. As the scene is not moving here, um, we need nothing else but just inserting. Same is true for the next frame and the next frame and again the next frame. If there would be movement from the figure on the left on the right, we could also choose uh, to insert this as a hovering insert. So this is called paste over, which then gives us the possibility to move the color mask around. So if there is movement in, within the scene, we can uh, move the color mask um, around until it fits and then again go to the next scene. This is not necessary here because the content on the left and on the right uh, simply doesn't move, so we can colorize the whole scene by simply adding um, always the same color mask. Ah, I missed one. So, and then it's finished. So now we have a colorized uh, scene. Um, that only changes the color on the left and the right and no matter what uh, the original game will insert in the middle area um, with the um, characters here and the score here will stay unchanged um, so the only thing uh, left to do is uh, in the, add a, a, a trigger frame as well so we go back uh, to the original recording say this is the trigger frame and then um, choosing the new color mask scene and again set add color switch. So now we have uh, different types of keyframes and also different types of scenes. Uh, the icon uh, in front of the scene and the keyframe uh, indicates what kind of uh, replacement or switching is chosen here. This one is uh, replacing and this one is adding color. Same here, the adding mode for this and that scene depends on um, what we um, uh, used in the adding mode. One uh, adjustment is necessary over here. When you look at the keyframe that we um, try to use here, there's a problem that uh, as I mentioned, there's a dynamic content within this first um, frame. So when you look at the, the keyframe preview over here, you can see that this also shows up in the, in the preview. And if I change uh, the plane, it's still there because it's uh, drawn in white, which uses both planes. So. Uh, whenever this frame will show up with a different um, character set, different uh, wording here, the frame uh, does not match or the hashtag hash does not match uh, because different pixels uh, results in a different hash. So what we need to do here is um, use a mask to exclude the inner part that can vary from time to time. So we uh, remove this keyframe again and then choosing a mask that masks out the inner part uh, of our um, scene we like to trigger to. So I will um, um, putting a mask over that uh, area which is now completely um, over the whole scene and now I'm masking out what I don't like to be part of the triggering hash. So this is exactly this inner part. So let's assume that's enough and maybe add a little bit more over here and here. So this would be our masking uh, frame. And if I do the masking this way, then um, 
the hash that is calculated here will automatically match only the blue areas that were uh, not covered by the mask. Unfortunately, the mask or hashing preview over here does not show um, the things that are masked out. So this will be a future improvement that you also see that uh, the, the characters in the middle area no longer appear in here. Okay, so but this uh, is it. Uh, and we committing the mask. And so last thing I want to show you is um, how to how to uh, create then the masking uh, keyframe and therefore we need to um, jump at the position where we uh, want to start our, our triggering then uh, to, to give the scene a masking keyframe switching on the mask that uh, spares everything uh, in the middle and then choosing what kind of uh, scene color masking scene we want to switch and then again click uh, ask, uh, add sorry add color scene switch while the mask is still on then the mask turns red which means do not change this mask anymore because it's already used uh, by one of the keyframes and uh, shouldn't therefore uh, not changed anymore and if you are now going uh, to select uh, this keyframe you will also see the marker here uh, saying mask number zero is used for calculating um, this hash code so this is it whenever this kind of scene now will appear uh, regardless what is in the middle here uh, it will trigger the color masking mouse scene which leave the middle part intact, but adds color to the two uh, areas on the left and on the right. So this is it for chapter two.